Hello and welcome to our show, CEOs Get Real. I'm your host, Christopher Marston with Exemplar Companies. Today we have Corey Mack, the CEO of LaForge Optical. Yes, thank you for having me. Welcome to the show, glad yeah. you're here. Yeah, uh, it's a joy to be here. Awesome, well let's toast. First of all, we got a wine from Golden State Wines. Want to thank them for giving Cheers. us a, a Rioja today. Yes. So we'll see what we think here. Not bad, I actually like it, I like it, I like it, everybody. All right, we got a Macan Rioja. All right, we're looking at it. Yeah, you're not kidding. That's actually that's very. It's good. really that's good. Very, that's very, that's good. very good. That's very good. We're gonna be we're gonna be just fine tonight. <laughs> so, Corey, tell us about like how did you come up with it? So this is a VR or is it AR? Uh, this is AR. Aug okay. Augmented reality, which uh, thanks to the bigger companies, the multi-billion-dollar companies, AR doesn't mean what it used to mean anymore. So, when, when I when I say AR, I mean. Uh, we're actually putting something, overlaying something that over something that's real. And so um, LaForge Optical, it, it's a lens literally that goes over your eyes or yeah. how does it work? So what it is, it's like, uh, I think I actually have a lens sample here in my You just happen to have I one just in your happen, pocket. I just happen to have you know, one. Everybody needs everyone a pocket walk, lens. Everyone walks around with, with lenses. Oh, it's buried underneath my phone here. <clears throat> there we go. So basically you, the idea is we put a very small, high precision. You can hold that. You can keep it. Actually, we got oh, hundreds cool. of these. Um, so the you basically we put a very small optic on the inside of that, and basically it's about the size of half a grain of rice, but to your eye, it's about the size of a cell phone in your hand. And so um. our core technology is how do we integrate that into an ophthalmic lens or a prescription lens? So that's our core okay. competency, and that's what makes us different from. VR platforms, Google Glass, HoloLens, stuff like that. When you say that it makes it different, it would be built into like your glasses right now. Exactly. The the idea <clears throat> is in the in the relatively near future, you you just like you do today, you say, okay, I'm going to go and I like this frame and I like this frame, and you say, can I have that with LaForge technology in it? And then our goal is to partner with a bunch of brands, so that answer will be yes. Interesting. So it's like having Watson or Amazon or something. Uh, you know, I mean Alexa built in. A or little something. bit. That's that's part uh, of it. Yeah. We're, I say we're building eyewear that gives you superpowers. So the the very easy one is you've forgotten someone's name before, right? All the time. All the time. It happens. I had to, I had to practice time. your name before. Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> we forget people's names all the time. Right. And you know, when I do that at networking events or when I'm out, I go Facebook. It's like. Was it Jan? Was it Janet? What was it? Or LinkedIn? And so what we'll say is, when you look at someone, we're we're gonna crawl your um, social media, and then it will just tell you this is Chris. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, and we've we've done that. Or creepy. Demo already. You know, we do it in a way yeah. that's not creepy, not all black. No, it's it's all about what you do with that information. Yeah. And <laughs> it's for like, us, for us, you know, like, what we do. Hey, with, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you know, what we do with that information. See, yeah. We do nothing with it. That's that. that we was do the, absolutely nothing with it. You know, my wife said. Uh, there's such a thing as a right answer machine. Mm -hmm. That was the right answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was the right. We do yeah. nothing with it. We do absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's with good. It. Good answer. Yeah. So how did you come up with the idea? Um, it it's uh, basically it's a series of things I was interested in in undergrad. Uh, I went to school at uh, RIT, which is the Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York. Nothing else to do in, in New York, but... In the wintertime, absolutely yeah. nothing. Uh, you can go to class and freeze to death. Yeah. Uh, you can walk backwards because the wind's that cold and the snow's hitting you in the eyes Ooh. Uh, that, you know, that that aggressively. But it was it was partially, there was this concept that, or sorry, there was this competition that LG was doing in the mid-2000s or mid to late 2000s about, hey, what's the phone in the future going to be like? And I said, let's figure out how to do a see-through phone concept. And I never submitted it because I had to do like classes. <laughs> but I kind of just kept in my sketchbook. And I realized, oh, well, if you put the display like in this spot, you could actually have a see-through phone. You could do this sort of right now. Uh, but it's mostly novelty. And then uh, I just left that on the side. Then there was a project I was working on, and it was like a... It was a smart home concept before smart homes were out there, and we had this round puck. It looked like we made it look like Hal, and you put it on your wall. And then the the idea was that um, if you left home, you could start turning off different things because we figured in the future everything would have a chip in it. So you right. could, if you left the stove on, you could turn that off. If you want the TV to turn <laughs> right. on, you could just do that all from this one device. And then we got ready to um, prototype it, had it all costed and designed, and Nest came out with oh, a round wow. puck on your wall that talks to other devices. So I know on a high level, 
the the sort of the sort of commentary is what would be what would prevent Nest from doing this? And we wouldn't have a good answer. You know, we couldn't predict that Nest was going to go into security. Right. So from that, actually, I was I was at a bar and had nothing to do with the whole Nest coming out. By the way, but I was at a bar. <laughs> you, you weren't depressed. No, I wasn't at a depressed. bar. Okay, got it. I'm, right. I'm a people watcher. I okay. like to watch people uh, watch people's behavior and figure out kind of why they're doing. That is something I do when I get really You should bored. say you're a behavioralist. That could be creepy if you're a people watcher. There's a difference, <laughs> oh, there's a difference between a, being a people watcher and a, and a stalker. And a looky-loo. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. I got it. All right, just but, check. <laughs> but what I noticed at this bar was I said, oh, my God, everybody's phone is, uh, is on them. It's either in their hand or in their pocket. Yeah. And I was like, when you're at home, that's not the case. It's, it's in your pants upstairs. It's charging somewhere. So I said, what's the point of having these cool smart home devices if you have to get up anyway? That's the whole point, so you don't have to get up. And then I said, what if we could come up with a smart home you could wear, right? Uh, as crazy as that sounds. Okay. And that actually was the genesis of the project. Okay, yeah. so it started with a question. Yeah. The what if, essentially. Yeah. And then you decided to be crazy enough to dedicate your life to trying to do that. Exactly, yeah. I, was, I, was, uh, I had a job, I was working at a, a Building design firm. I was after college. Was after this? college, okay. yeah. Your I favorite thing, right? Oh God, no! Oh God, no, no, no! Uh, <laughs> it was. It's one of those things where I was at the high level. I got. I got a certain level of respect and candor that would be expected, and not like in the the you know the, the stereotypical millennial way. I'm going to come into your company and we're going to change it. You're doing everything wrong. It was just like being decent. But there were some people in the middle of the company that for whatever reason uh, did not like me and it just made my existence there kind of not fun. And Based on like evidence or like oh, yeah. I mean, they just your mere presence was irritating? There or was like, something about irritating. me they didn't like, I'll put it that way, okay. in the sense of imagine you're working and then someone puts work on top of your hands yeah. while you're working. That level of disrespect, okay. right? Got I it. think anyone would call that disrespect. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, there, was, uh, there was a time, for example, there was a snowstorm and the mayor had, you know, told, you know, had evacuated downtown Rochester, and uh, everyone had left early. But uh, the person who was managing me uh, told one of the senior partners that I had left early. And then I said, "Wait, what day was it?" For example, and I told him what day was. It's like, "Oh, wait a second. I said, did he not notice that the parking lot was empty? Did he not notice that the entire building was empty and the lights were off? And did he not notice that there was a blizzard?" And he goes, "He goes, wait, was that the day the mayor?" Said, yeah, I said, "Yeah." He didn't, he didn't notice that the 80 other people weren't there. He only noticed that I wasn't there. That's what I mean. That's kind of setting you up for, for failure of professionally. Course, okay, and that yeah. was me getting my start. And wow. I just, you, know, you see the writing on the wall. So you earned your stripes with that one. What do you chalk it up to? I, I don't know. We, <clears throat> okay. could, we could call it otherism. We could call it other things. But it's one of the things where it was just in that particular department. Is the company great? Absolutely. You know? They, they gave me my first job based on, uh, you know, the community work I was doing uh, with one of the local high schools, uh, getting right. um, students of color, uh, you know, uh, Latinx community as oh, well the, involved. That with. company has a reputation then? Yeah, yeah they, they, they sponsored it. a robotics team it. and I was volunteering huh. with it because our school had a uh, partnership with this high school. It was, uh, you don't, you don't want to say it's not a good high school because there are people there working hard, but it was, it was far from the best high school there it was highly impoverished and right. you know at that point I was still down with, with volunteering for those issues. So you did you grow up in Rochester then? No I didn't I'm actually from the south I'm from North Carolina. Oh um, all right. I have some family in uh, in Rochester my dad was born there though he was raised in Florida um, and in this project actually I did most of it in in Rochester the, the, which we'll talk about later yeah. but yeah and I mean like so I came up with the idea for this in, in Rochester uh, doing uh, doing experiments in my bathtub, of all things, figuring out You mean this do. optical yeah, thing? Yeah, for the optical thing. I figured out how to get the optics. Bored in the work. bathtub, huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah base, basically, <laughs> yeah. And uh, there was something I noticed uh, in my glasses, and then I was able to, you know, make a sketch of what I was seeing, and I'm like, you know, dipping my lenses in water and seeing what's going on. And Were I there mushrooms out, involved? Or <laughs> I, I wish, I wish, okay. right? I like... wish, no. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, sometimes they do have the answer. You know, sometimes they, they, they make you see things that aren't there. But this, he's never tried anything like it. I'm just, no. just, just a disclaimer. <laughs> uh, 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 allegedly. Right, allegedly. that's right. We're, we're going to stick with that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the big, did the big question, the big what if, mm -hmm. come to you while you were working at this firm? Yeah, it did. <clears throat> it did. Um, uh, there was a place I would go to, um, a bar. It was a really cool bar. It's like a dive bar. 
called Lux. I, I'll never forget it. It's like a place for freaks and geeks, basically. Uh, it's like, a dive bar called Lux, go dive, figure. Yeah. Dive bar yeah. called Lux, yeah, yeah, like I remember that. it's 666 South Avenue and it's all demonic on the inside. And I loved it. Um, and that's, that's, we're getting way off topic. But no, like, that's yeah. perfectly on topic. You know, there, <laughs> but there's yeah, that, something that shaped you. Yeah, and, and it I has, still, yeah, and I, I, every time I go back to Rochester, which candidly is not frequently, but it <clears> will be becoming more frequently next year, um, it, it, I still go there. It's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the okay. same place. It's just shut down at the moment. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. So when you came up with the, but how did you know? How did you know you should start a business? Like how did? What did that? Oh, uh, yeah. Lots of people are saying what if in their bathtub, it, but they don't have few people. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's, it's something that's been a part of me since I was, was a kid. So the first business I did was in middle school. Okay. Um, I think her name was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Leanna. Her name? Yeah, her name was Leanna Blue. The business? No, no, sorry, no, no. No, <laughs> no, no the, 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 the person Anything's who, possible. Who, who, has like... no, who has no idea uh, kind of what this thing did. We, we had like a science fair, and she did this thing called uh, Friendship Bread. I think it was her. I'm pretty sure it was her. Uh, called Friendship Bread. And Friendship Bread is a recipe that leaves a little extra dough. And she left the class all this little extra dough. And so, and then she gives the recipe. And so you add to, and again, there's always a little extra, so you give that away. So what I did was I said, I made it, and I was like, this friendship bed is good. It's like a really good pound cake. Um, and I said, this is so good, I think I'm gonna sell it. And so I just, every day I would come home, I would bake cakes, and then I would uh, go door to door and sell them. And then people actually were like, it started getting around, and I was like, realize, man, this is starting to feel like work. Every time I get home from school at four o'clock, I have to immediately start baking. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I didn't have enough time to do my homework, so I stopped doing that because it was just too much work. Um, and then I started selling. I took that money, flipped it basically. Yeah, not to mention the weight gain, but anyway. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I was, I was, just, I, was a string, I was a string bean then. <laughs> that, like, that's you know, good. But like people, people don't understand. It was just like, you think I'm thin now? You should have seen me. You should have seen me in college and in high school. You, you, if I turned sideways, you couldn't see me. No, I'm you know, that's, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so I flipped that, and I started selling candy uh, on on school on my school bus. And I monopolized that to the chagrin of some people. And then I started selling candy on buses I wasn't on. And I had affiliates. And this was in middle school. <laughs> affiliates. Then, yeah. And then I had, and then I got called That's to the great. principal's office. And um, he said, I've been trying to figure out what's going on. So this is my first time dealing with regulation. I've been trying to figure out what's been going on. It's like, what, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, do you know why you're here? And I was like, no. He's like, you, our sales and the snack machines have gone down to the point that when the guy comes in to refill them, that he's noticing that he doesn't have to refill them at all. And I couldn't figure it out, but it was like, there was someone else on your bus trying to do sales and she squealed on you because you cut, you made sure she wasn't gonna sell anything. I like told you, I monopolized it in my middle school. <laughs> uh, and uh, That's a brilliant story. And then he was just like, uh, you're gonna have to stop selling because you're promoting a non-healthy lifestyle. And I said, I said, I'm selling candy out of backpacks on eight buses, and you're selling. You have a whole, you have a whole sugar machine that everyone has to walk by. I said, I said, you're just as guilty as I am. And he goes, I'll put it to you this way: if you're selling anything more if i hear anything about you selling and i've already talked to your bus driver and the other bus drivers they're looking for you if you sell anything else i'm going to suspend you for for non-compliance and i stopped i just gave it all my candy away that afternoon didn't do uh anything for a while and i said not going to touch this again and then i got bit by the bug again in high school iPod shuffle came new out. principal <laughs> yeah, exactly new principal my principal high school is very cool uh, mr kid's very cool and uh uh, I started selling um, iPod shuffles because no one could find them, and I just, you know, I just played to my gut. And I you said, went up market. Yeah, I went up market. <laughs> I went up market, and no. so what I found out was uh, <laughs> this: was that uh, basically uh, I said no one could find them, and I said, what are the odds that the Hick Towns have them still, right? Of course, yeah, that's right. So I called them, and they had dozens of them. And I put those on eBay, and they were going for 70 bucks. I was selling for 250. Oh wow! And there was one point, 
you know, I was bringing in a thousand dollars a day for a couple of weeks, which for a high schooler is significant. That's, that's, that's it's very time. significant. And then uh, basically with that, when that sort of got flying the ointment because someone had basically stolen one from me and said that one of the customers on eBay right. had stolen one from me and uh, said I never shipped them on. And that sure. one thing plugged up the entire system. No kidding. So yeah. So then I said, That's never great. again for the okay, second time. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. And then I got bit by the bug in college. And it, never, <laughs> it never really let go of me after okay, that. Okay, so the bug was in you. Yeah. You know, the traditional job thing wasn't working yeah. out. You were getting signals from the gods, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. Like, okay. And so, so at some point, but how did you know this was the idea? Um, right? It's... It's a it's an embarrassing story. That, I knew I would it's ask. A, I knew somewhere in here a, I could get to a, what's it's, real. It's an embarrassing story. So basically, and not the first part of this. It's going to sound like that's embarrassing. Well, we started part, in the it, bathtub. Is, exactly, this, is exactly. this a toilet story? No, it's not a toilet story. It's not a. No, it's a. It's a it was, I was. I was. I was found drunk in a closet. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, but like basically, um, what happened was this. Um, I came to the realization when I was in Rochester, I was like, Corey, you're in a city you don't want to be in. You're working a job you don't like, and you're dating a woman you don't love. Mm. You did everything wrong. And then I came to this realization, it's sort of one of my inner <clears throat> mantras, which is, uh, but I do it in reverse, which is, the, what, the observation was, Corey of three years ago did Corey of today absolutely no favors. You have to start from scratch. There are no other opportunities that you can sort of catch and run with it. So for me, I always try to throw a Hail Mary pass so that in the, in the event I need it, it might actually be right where I am and then I can run with it. Um, so that was part of it. So basically I said to myself- Did you just say you would throw the pass and then you'd run to catch it on the other side? Exactly, that's, so you, how, okay, that's, yeah. how, that's, how, that's how brilliant. high okay. you have to throw them Okay, in, got it, I'm pass. just, I'm just checking I'm to make sure you were the thrower yeah, and the catcher. I, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and you were throwing from Rochester, it, which means you had to get the hell out of Dodge to, to it, catch it. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I had to go a couple other places and try some things out. But yeah. the, the, so the part of it was, was this, was I had to look at myself and say, how did you get here, first of all? How did you get to this trifecta? You don't like your love <laughs> life, you don't like your professional life, you don't like, you don't like your social life, basically. Yeah. Except and, the bar. Except the bar, yeah, the bar was cool. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the bar okay. was cool. Um, and uh, the, the, the thing that it's, like I said, the thing that struck me was I wasn't doing myself favors. And so what I had to determine was, what do I want to do next? And part of that was doing an inner, you know, an introspective, I guess is what it's called, and coming to the conclusion of, Corey, you're not happy. So, okay, what is happy? And I do this exercise with some of my friends who or get, get lost or whatever kind of time, not what is happiness, what is happy to you? And it took me several weeks, maybe a couple months to realize what it was. And it's this image in my mind of when I was a little kid in Greensboro in the bad neighborhood. My, my dad would be mowing the grass and um, I would follow behind him with my little Fisher Price bubble lawn mower. But then when I was tired of doing that, you know, like four or five, I would just lie down in the grass and look up at the sky. It doesn't sound like a bad neighborhood yet. No. no. Okay, got it. The got bad it. Neighborhood. There's a funny story about it. It's four years it. old. You yeah. probably didn't notice. No, I, did, I didn't okay. notice. But there were, there were signs. Like there's a crazy <clears throat> Fourth of July story. I can with some firecrackers <laughs> okay. and people thought it was a drive-by. Oh, was boy. Just, it was just hilarious. <laughs> like they were, under, they were under their tables. But any, anyway, like it was, um, and I, I realized that actually is my happy. Mm. So my happy is basically... One of them, it's the freedom to go outside and do nothing. That's the low level sort of observation. Yeah. But the high level was what I'm doing. I was looking up at the sky, wondering how it all worked. Mm. So happiness for me is being in a place where I don't know everything, where I'm still able to learn. You the know, wonder of the world, work. right? Yeah, the wonder of the how world. does it all work? And so that's why I get involved with projects that, you know, some people say you have no, you have no business doing that. So like with this, it's like, in the early days, they were like, you don't have a background in optics, you don't have a background in this and that, you know, you're, you're, um, you're, you're, you're so young, you smell a little like pee kind of thing, you know, and that sort of thing, like you really don't know what you're doing. But yet I, I came out of that process with two, with two issued patents. You know, I came yeah. out of that pushing the state of the art. I came out of that, uh, you know, talking to some really high tech companies and they were like, man, no one ever thought to do it that way. 
you know. When you're talking about that, you mean this? Yeah, with, optics. That, with okay. that there. And like, okay, so cool? you had a specific idea right. at the time you were exploring. Exploring it. So there were three ideas, and this is where it gets embarrassing. Oh, this okay, yeah, because I haven't heard yeah, the sorry, embarrassing yeah, did, part sorry. yet. I, I can drone on sometimes. That, that's the best part is yeah. the embarrassing part. Yeah, Bring so it on. Basically, I had three ideas. One of them was this board game I made that was uh, similar to Monopoly, but it was called Capitalism. Okay. Um, the other one <laughs> was this project. Uh, which was called Mirage Project back then, um, before we got funding. And then the other one was just a stupid project. I mean, just like something that Reddit would love. And it's it's a it's a drone that looks like a cloud with the personality of a cat. So and it's for elder care. Yeah, it's 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 out there. It's super out. I there. I didn't know how you described that. Yeah, like what? A, so what? picture picture a big fluffy cloud, maybe the size of like a small pillow. Okay. And what it will do is it will go and it will land on you and it will purr, it will vibrate, and you can pet it. Will it hiss? It does something else. So <laughs> it does something else instead. So what it so what it would do is um, like a cat. Cats are very finicky. You know, sometimes they like you, sometimes they don't. So if you pet it too much, it'll get angry. It'll light yeah, up. Yeah, it'll make course, yeah. it'll make thunder sounds and then fly away. And it's for people who are isolated. So it's sort of like a toy, and sort of. I got it. Topic. It'll get pissed off and leave. Yeah. It'll get yeah but after off. it like wounds you. Yes. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So it, the it's the, not unfair to say you chose right. By the yeah, way. Yeah. Oh, no, the yeah, okay. Got it. So, okay. so that's the thing. So it was just like <laughs> which one do you want to be known for is one thing. And then the other thing was, it was like, if you're going to go to a convention for this, what kind of woman is going to be there? And uh, that's, that's the sort of embarrassing part. Yeah. Was well, it was actually the most shallow, most male thing, which is what type of woman would be attracted to you? Like if you're, if you're the game board guy and there's nothing wrong with games, I love them, but they're, they're eccentric. And anyone who knows me knows I'm pretty eccentric. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm right. I'm pretty eccentric enough. It was just like, so if you're going to out eccentric That fit me, you. And then, yeah. and then. You know, you know uh, killing your grandma of rejection instead of loneliness is another yeah. option, but you yeah, chose exactly. you chose right. Yeah. So th th that's good. I don't know why was that embarrassing because it's, the emba it's embarrassing because it's just like, would you really think that what would lead somebody into a uh, into going into a business is the type of woman that would be attracted to them? Oh, yeah. oh, I get it. Well, that was a part of your analysis. Yeah, it's part okay, of my analysis. It. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So optics are pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So, but 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 what's the big? So there's always a big idea behind every business, right? So yes. Google Glass was around, right? Right. All right. Are you a millennial? Technically, I, I am. I am. All right. Not to get yeah. done. I'm not trying to force you to admit to guilt or anything. No, I, I, so I, I, wear, I, I wear I wear my millennial badge with pride. As uh, I tell people, we are, we are all uniquely the same. That's that's how you can, <laughs> that's, that's how you can sum up millennials. That's a good one. We are all uniquely the same. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So well, how did you you must have looked at what was out there and said. Yeah, Google Glass, all the other stuff. It's not quite there and said, but this could be it. Yeah. So what's different for those who don't understand yeah. this, this industry? Here's what's different is I was able to recognize this one number, which is 66. And that's the percentage of people in any developed country that wear prescription glasses. And all the other augmented reality technology is not compatible with people who wear prescription glasses. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's okay. the big difference. Everyone was just sort of, you know, rushing to, hey, look what we can do. Look what we can put in front of your face. And they were ignoring safety. Like, literally, is this good for your eyes? Safety. What happens when you trip and fall? Uh, you know, those sorts of things. Because in some of those cases, they actually do have glass. Right yeah, yeah sure. What was that? Uh, what was that app where you find that that little character? Oh, app? Pokemon. Yeah, Go. Pokemon Go, yeah. and people are like falling off cliffs and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people. Yeah, are, yeah, kind of stuff. yeah, they're they're yeah. running over pedestrians and all this crazy. Great for lawyers. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every, everything everything disruptive is great for lawyers. Yeah. They'll they they'll, they'll right. play both sides of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that that's the core difference. Is yeah. we knew that we knew that if we could find a solution that would work for the 66%, it actually works for everybody. Because if you don't need prescription lenses, your prescription is zero. Yeah, that's right. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, zero. It's yeah. just zero. And so like me, I'm like, I'm minus four and a quarter in one eye and minus three something in the other eye. That doesn't mean much to most people other than I, you know, I can't see that well. But like, uh, <laughs> but great. but you know, it's it's one of those things to where it's that subtle difference that's the that's the difference right. between what we're doing, and that right. that dictates a form factor. And um, someone who was mentoring me at the time, he said, Corey, there's this thing you need to know. There's two things you need to know about the eyewear industry. The first thing is this: people they pick the frame first, and they pick the lens or the technology second. If you go into the eye store, people right. don't that's care. True. People that's don't true. care 
what what the lens technology is, totally the coding. Right. They want to know, does it look good on my face? Absolutely. That was our number one. And the other thing he said is the eyewear industry runs on SSDD. Am I allowed to curse on this show? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Okay, cool. So SSDD stands for same shit, different design. Got it. And that's what the lens is. The lens yeah. is, it's the same design, but you can cut this into any shape you want, and it still works. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's the same electronics in all the frames. They yeah. just look different. And so that was something, those were my sort of, I guess, heuristics, you want to call it, to say, we're going about this in the right way. The got idea it, is to it. drop this in. So with these... Yeah. That's not as controversial as you can get, right? No. Okay, God, good, no, good. God. <laughs> the yeah. night is young. Yeah. But like, but like for this, this is a lens made out of conventional lens materials, which means anybody who currently makes eyewear on Earth can take this and make glasses. I literally went to mom mm. and pops around town, and I just said... They're like, what is this? And they're like, I want you to just fit this like it's a bifocal, put this prescription on it. That's all I want you to do. And I said, don't worry about what it is. And I just said, just know that you need to be able, that this lets you know it's right side up. So if it's upside down, you know you got it wrong. Um, and that's what you know. And they were all able to do it. And they were like, what is it for? And I said, oh, now I'll tell you what it actually is. And they were like, oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So you, you can't do that with a HoloLens. You can't go, yeah, to, yeah, you no can't go to Lens Crafters and get a special HoloLens just for you. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. How long ago did you start this business? Uh, this one's, it'll be, it's actually six years, it'll be six years in, I think, two weeks. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. And we started from nothing. Nothing. It, okay. it was bootstrapped to friends and family, to smaller angels, to bigger angels, to family offices, and now we're looking at VCs and yeah. certain economic development corporations. Yeah, you know. so you've raised at least a couple million. Yeah, a couple million yeah. that we've done. We're, we're, we're raising another million right now, um, and then fingers crossed, yep. sometime in Q1 we'll, we'll be able to get that number. You know. Okay, good. Well, so people are back at it. It's a weird... How has the pandemic affected you? Oh, God. It's uh, uh, all, all the emotions. I've gone through the stages of grief in the beginning of the year, and this, this ventilator came out of that. Tell me about that. Let, yeah. Let's unpack it. Yeah, so uh, 20, 2019 was, was a tough year for the company. We, uh, a major, one of our major customers, our, I call them our bread and butter, keeps the lights on customers, was about to file for bankruptcy and they were about to oh, wow. skate on a, let's just call it a six figure payable that they owed us. And they just did it in the worst way possible. And we had to get you know, some people to go after them and we were able to recover some of that. Um, we then used that money to then do some of the demos I was talking about, like, you know, tells you people's names, and we did that. We were talking to a very, I won't say the name of the company, but a very large, you would definitely know them, uh, Korean uh, electronics company, and they were down for white labeling this, and it would have been something that would have gotten us into millions of dollars of revenue per of month. Previously, I think the most revenue the company had ever really done in a given month up to that time. Again, we hadn't even launched. This was just through licenses. Okay. We were basically pulling in about you know, 30, 20 to 30K uh, a month in, okay. in, in licenses, um, which is good for a company sure that, is, you yeah. know, that's you know, <clears throat> deep tech, emerging tech. Um, and we also had uh, the state of New York make a commitment uh, to um, give us some very nice financing. Huh. And then two weeks after those great conversations happened, uh, the lockdown happened. Wow. And uh, it was it was a very depressing thing because it was like, we just got over. I tell people, it's like, it's like yeah. that last scene, the Shawshank Redemption, where it's yeah. just like, there's just, there's just shit and there's more shit and there's more shit coming at you. Um, and then I have to do the job of explaining to people who've taken pre-orders that, hey, this thing that's been delayed for all these internal reasons is actually being delayed by an external re reason. Yeah. And some people like the, the openness and some people were pissed. And um, it's one of those things where what we had to do was I just had to say, look, we're just going to have to close doors until we figure out what's going on. Because there was a certain point where it's like, I just want to see what's going to happen for three weeks. And then three weeks later, I was like, Nothing. It's gonna yeah, nothing like, like this. It's gonna get worse. Is what's gonna certainty happen. Certainty that nothing yeah. was gonna happen. Yeah, was, set in. Yeah, right. the government was not gonna do the appropriate thing. And then you're seeing governors uh, argue with the president. You're seeing governors fight each other and outbidding each sure. other for stuff. And it was just like it's a damn free for all. And they're not caring about the small businesses. No they're not doubt. caring about the startups whatsoever. And a bunch of companies got clobbered. You know, like 
if you run a restaurant, I don't know. I don't know how in the hell you could survive. This. Oh sure, yeah. This I don't know. A, it was a. It was an. A, it was absolutely a crisis of they, Main Street. Yeah. They run. They run on. Yeah. They run on slim margins. Sure. You know. They they run on slim margins. I think you know if you're doing a good restaurant, that's maybe yeah. you're running ten percent margins. Oh, that's huge. Which, that would be think huge. about it. If you lose a month of revenue, <laughs> it'll take you a year. Sure. To recoup, recoup that loss so every month. That's what people understand. Yeah. Every month a yeah. restaurant is shut down is a year or two years. They need to be open to recover yeah. that, which means it's not going to happen. So yeah. So what what I decided to do was I just as I'm sitting there, understanding what exponential growth is, watching these death numbers go up, and and I'm just there and I'm just like, oh my god, this is really happening. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I said. Man, everyone's been preparing, you know, sort of jokingly for the zombie apocalypse. And it's like it's here. It's just the zombie's really small, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and it's and it's killing people, <laughs> you know. Um, and I was just like, yeah. I'm living through this, and I said, I feel so helpless. Mm. I feel so useless right now. I got to do something. And then I got an email. Um, I got and it's, an e and it said I can't breathe, which was a political statement. Right, 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 right yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's not what it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was that yeah, when it got to that, that was pretty that was a low point, I think, for everybody when yeah, that yeah. happened um, yeah. across the board. But that this was before that. Okay. It was one of it was one of those things where I got an email from uh, Special Operations Command. Uh, this little this little portal they have. For yeah, because they email you all the time, right? Because like, yeah. you know, everybody it's, it's everybody gets of, emails from special ops. It's know? sort of it's sort of <laughs> weird, but kind of yeah. I get I get emails from them about you know it used to be more often, but yeah, basically about five every other month. Um, and they said we're going to do this competition um, to to see if who can build a three hundred dollar ventilator. And then I thought about it. I told my girlfriend, um, hey, let's. Uh, what do you think about this? She's like, I think you should do it. And then I was complaining a lot, and I'm downstairs watching uh, Governor Cuomo on on CBS talk about if you could turn T-shirts into like masks, we'll we'll invest in that. And I was just like, oh, he's telling the truth. They're that desperate that they're doing stupid stuff now. So I was <laughs> like, I was like, oh, well, maybe I could do one of these, sell it to New York. So I told my girlfriend, I was just like, you think I should do this? And she's like, you should do something because you're getting on my nerves of all your complaining. Uh, sign of a good relationship, by the way. Not. Uh, <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, and 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 basically, I said, yeah, I think I'll do this. And uh, we there was only it was like a seven day competition, which is ridiculous. And I, I joined wow. it was four days. You had seven days to make seven, a three hundred dollar ventilator. Yeah. Work. So <laughs> I I did it, and I think we came in at like two hundred and like ninety eight dollars or something. And I put it on Facebook, and something strange happened that has never happened with any Facebook post I've had. It started getting shared with people I didn't know, and it was like hundreds of likes, and I was getting emails and text messages and phone calls, and like you know, I was just like, wow, this is the first project I've ever done that's had this much positivity. I kind of have to keep going. Like the Forge project, um, I tell people, I you know, I was getting hate mail for the first three years of oh, I was doing that project, and it was from like all these random people I didn't know, and I was like, this this is a good sign. You know, this is very positive. Yeah, yeah. And I, um, people hit me up and it was just like, hey, um, I know someone who is a board of trustee member at RAT. They have this nonprofit. They may fund this. And I said, okay, let's talk to him. And we got a grant from his nonprofit for 10K to get it going. And for La Forge, for me to get to the first 10K, that took about 14 months. Yeah. With yeah. this one, it was a 15 minute phone call on a Sunday. So I was like, this is a good sign. This is good. I like this. And then some of my friends were reaching out. I was like, I can help you like this. Uh, my old professors reached out. How can I help you? And I was like, darn, this is awesome. Um, so this is a ventilator here this that is, you made. Yeah, this is a prototype uh, of a ventilator. This is the 15th iteration over about seven months. So yeah, I'm a madman. And yeah, so this one here is, for you guys who don't know, ventilators can look like anything. Most of them are big. Some are small. Um, but basically, ventilators usually cost around twenty-five grand, twenty-five to sixty thousand dollars. And this one, we're gonna we're gonna retail one for about for about four grand, and we're gonna retail another one for about um, you know six grand, and we're we're making money on that. And it's not the purpose. of This is not to make money. We're do it is. Let's be real, right? The, the twenty twenty one is gonna be yeah. nasty. Uh, we we all gotta live, and uh, I, I'd like to be able to support my friends who helped this in some way. Yeah, helped out with this in some way. So basically, what it is here is we just, my, my thesis on this is let's make it robustly built, 
let's use as much stuff off the shelf. Whatever we can't find off the shelf, we'll make it out of plastic. And the deal with this one is there's so many details that are intertwined in this. So these panels, these are 3D printed panels, but in the final production one, which we're probably about a month away from that, it's made from ocean plastic. There's mm. a company here in LA that basically reclaims old fishing nets and they get people to go on beaches and they buy the plastic off of them and then they clean it, repolymerize it, and so this will be made from that. So we're sort of addressing multiple crises at That's the great. same time. So we're helping people who, who would need a ventilator in COVID in the US, underserved yeah. communities, and that was part of a draw here is, um, uh, is, is that you know I'm from a community of color disadvantaged and this is disproportionately yeah. affecting people of color. They're disproportionately dying from this. Yeah. Um, for a variety of reasons. And same thing for Native American communities, right. Latin American communities. So what we say is, you know, it started out being something for anyone here, but our goal right. is to say anywhere on the world you want to you wanna get, if you want to get access to a low-cost right. ventilator that's FDA approved, here you go. And we're, we're going to be looking for affiliates and partners on the nonprofit side to say we can, you're trying to get to Corey's company with the Aura project, we can do it. But you know, it's cool. I mean, we have, they, they come in, this is one that's a developer, so it's all black, but down on the floor, we got one that's this cool coral color and another one that's just got this blue on it. And that was some, something that was thought about because of the, the frontline workers. Oh, that's great. That's why the colors are there, huh. is to say, you're dealing with death more, more than usual. That's weighing on you. So let's make this machine not so serious. Huh. So let's make it in a color that's not red and black. That's yeah. what I was going to do. Let's do it in let's do it in this really cool coral and let's do it in this really awesome, you know, inoffensive turquoisey green. Let's yeah. make it, you know, kind of, you know, kind of like a, like it looks like a little like a cartoon character, yeah. which I, I can give you guys some renderings. We, we can put, you can put cool. those up. Yeah. But you can see it, I actually yeah. gave the machine a personality because it was very key that these not be threatening to yeah. anybody. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, it's been burned by people, um, uh, what do you call it? People prophesying things that defy the laws of physics or defy common sense, and they've been burned by it. And there's someone else going, and people feel they have to do it. And I know that I've been able to track it to there's a lot of people who bought into this thing called plastic. I think it was like a credit card that works everywhere, and it just didn't work the way they thought it was, and they thought it was a scam. And I think people need to understand that the difference between um, a scam and a technology failing is intention. Um, scams are when you're you're promising something and um, it's not working out sure. and you don't tell people and you hide it or you never had any intention of it. So one of them, I'm sure you've seen this thing, there was a bracelet a while ago that would project something onto your arm. Maybe you've seen it. It's like this orange bracelet. I didn't see that. Yeah, and so um, there were some people who believed in that, but the deal with the difference between that guy and me is I was showing my prototypes the whole time and they right. worked. Right. Whereas him, it was like he made the cardinal sin um, in physics, which is he projected the color black. But you can't project black because black is the absence of light. Yeah, that's and projectors right. are only light. Like that didn't dawn upon him? <laughs> didn't dawn upon him. Also, it didn't okay, mean, dawn upon him that, you know, right. people have yeah. hairy arms. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, the got sun's it. out. Some that's, of us have dark skin. I'm just saying that yeah. sounds kind of fundamental. But, yeah, so the uh, deal That's why is, you're you and not him. Exactly, <laughs> and there's, there's, a, um, there's a fundamental... Yeah. Um, you know, hatred of that because that's just straight up engineering malpractice, yeah. you know, yeah. Where, whereas, whereas what we're doing is hard and, you know, I give people updates when I can, but I do remind people I'm a human, I'm working on this full time. And we, for example, magically raised over $2 billion. We raised 0.1% of what they raised, 0.1% mm -hmm. of what they raised. And by the time we got to um, the right investors, they were like, oh my God, you have more done than Magically did when they pitched us three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, darn it, I got to the room th three, you know, three and a half years too late. And so that's, that's what it is. And yeah. so what I do is I used to take that stuff on and I would talk to some, I have really good relationship with my customers. Like yeah. so, several of them have my cell phone number and they email me and we talk or whatever. Some I've even met, which Go figure, right? You're developing a product project. You should meet with your a product. You should meet with your customers, potential customers. Yeah. And so we talk, and they were like, "Wow, this is actually amazing." I was like, "Yeah." So yeah. what? Tell me about what it's. What is it supposed to do in its ideal yeah. world? You gave me one example mm -hmm. in a networking setting, but what's yeah. the vision? At a 
at a high level, I'll tell you at a high level what we're trying to do. I'll say my Silicon Valley pitch is for you to be able to look at anything and understand whatever you want about it. And of course, the asterisk is without getting into privacy issues. Right. You know, we're right, not sure. making the ultimate stalker device. We're not, you know, it's one of those things where I just know about humans. Humans can catch on that there's something going on. So sure. it's just like if you if you think you're going to impress a woman with, you know, with with data, you're you're not. You're going you're not even presenting your real self and you're probably going to freak her out. Uh, I say that cuz guys tend, tend to get into the sort of weird spy stuff. Women women tend not to. But an example of this, for example, is an example. Dating tip, a, random yeah. dating tip. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, so, yeah. So, an example, an example of this would be. Um, well, okay. So, so, so but so, you have apps. There are apps, augmented reality apps, where you could point your phone at the sky mm -hmm. and see the constellations. Yeah, and instance. that's that's diff, that's different. So that okay. is that that's what I'm saying. Augmented reality now has two meanings. That's actually what's known as mediated reality, uh, because you're looking at a screen and then yes. the screen and there's a camera feed. Whereas yeah. with ours, you're looking at the sky, and we overlay it over the sky. Totally, okay. There's so nothing between you and I it. understand. There's yeah. no intermediate step right. between there's, there's, you and the reality. Exactly. So that's, that's yeah, so exactly. But, so, but it's the same, but from a data standpoint. From a data standpoint, from so a data it's, point, exactly, it's exactly it. the same. So you could be taking a tour on, like, Paul Revere's, like, a trail, in, yeah. you know, his Freedom Trail in Boston, and you could be getting information about, yeah. like, whose grave that is exactly. over there. and what that church is and all that while you're walking to the Freedom yeah. Trail. Once, you know? once we're yeah. ready, we want to do something like that, but at the mm -hmm. Getty Museum. Yeah, I think that would right. be awesome. Mm -hmm. So instead of people walking around with those little things. Oh, yeah, those things are embarrassing. You could see it, and you yeah. could, you know, we can, you know, computer vision and, and object tracking has gotten to the point where, you know, you're looking at this sculpture, and it can literally overlay, pinpoint certain things. That's the ultimate goal. It will manifest in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, imagine, you know, this is a crazy concept I tell people. But imagine storing data at a, just based on location. So when you go to a place, there could be something, you know, like old, like old school geocaching, someone hid something. But in this case, they didn't hide a message for you to read under this particular rock that you found the location on a forum. You're out in a park, and there is this really cool experience that if you just wore these glasses and went to this place, it could unlock uh, a really cool journey it could unlock a really cool story. There could be a memorial there that sure. only you could see. That's the future we're trying to, uh, that's the future we're trying to enable. The future I'm not trying to enable is where we're literally replacing people's faces with other people's faces. And I think that unfortunately, that will, when you get some of the people in the media, they're gonna probably wanna take it that way and try to exploit people and do some of the things that were what was the name of that? Was, there was like a movie on Netflix, a documentary on Netflix. Social. Uh, the Social Dilemma, I think it is. Social Dilemma, yeah. Yep. We That's don't, right. We don't, want to, we don't want to facilitate that, mm -hmm. um, but someone will figure out how to do that on someone's platform. Ours is, you know, our, 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 our sort of mantra is we design products because of people, not in spite of people. And that's, you know, ingrained within the product itself. Yeah. So, do you feel that there's a whole new, it, it, like, ethic that that your generation's aware of because of what, like, the social dilemma and the ways that, you know, social media can manipulate? And it's not just social media; it's media of all kinds. It's technology, and and you know, we're more present to the ethical dilemmas of that. Yeah. Yeah. Aware is a good word. The question is, I don't think that there's, I don't get the sense of empowerment just based on what happened uh, with Facebook yeah. and, and how that turned out or what, what, what's going on in YouTube with uh, your, you know, they're, they're, they're pumping up, you know, folks like Alex Jones and some of his crazy conspiracy theories and, you know, 15 billion people were looking at, you know, for, that got 15 billion impressions, for example, not 15 million views, but just impressions yeah. that was shown. So there's a level of responsibility that the platform holder needs to have while respecting privacy and while respecting First Amendment rights. You know, there's some stuff that's on there that you may not agree with, but the question is, is it hurting anybody? Right, sure. And if it is literally hurting somebody, you have to make that judgment call. And I think the earlier you do it, that's how you can keep the genie in the bottle, you know? Yeah. Let's, um, let's get, before we get real, because it sounds like we're going to get real here, right? Yeah, we could, yeah. Because that's as real as it gets, <laughs> this stuff. Um, yeah, so th you know, thank you for sharing this, this story. So uh, obviously, is this something that's designed to be worn, like, 
daily with all your glasses? Day. All, all day. day. This is, I tell people, this is not another pair of glasses. This is your next pair of glasses, and we'll be able to do it in sunglasses as well. Okay. So it so, wouldn't hurt your vision. It no. wouldn't be damaging to your eyes. Just it they're, they're, they're just as damaging as wearing glasses outside. You know, the most damaging thing to your eyes is the sun. Um, and with displays, particularly with one that is that tiny and that crisp, there are some things we could do to compete with the sun, but we're not. Mm -hmm. Because if we, if we were to be irresponsible and do the marketing thing of saying, oh, you can view this in daylight all the time, we're, this is getting, this optics are so precise, if we crank it up too, if we crank up the intensity too much, it starts to get close to being a laser. Yeah, yeah. And that's course. a problem, and we don't want to do that. Yeah, that Noted that there are companies literally shooting lasers in the people's eyes, and I don't agree with that. You know. Yeah, Lasix. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that, well, yeah, I forgot about that one. I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. all right, good, yeah. good. Yeah. Well, before we move on to the Get Real part, what's your, what do you think about Exemplar? Um, Exemplar, I think, is, is a really good concept because I can tell you in my early stages of getting you know, my first real startup off the ground with Forge, yeah. You have to find attorneys, you have to find advisors and stuff. It takes a ton of time, and you may be getting conflicting things uh, there, and then there's that sort of double-edged sword of maybe they give, you, they give you a line of credit or there's that retainer, and there's that sort of friction of when do you call your attorney, when do you call your advisor because you're willing it down, and when you're early on, you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, and you're asking yeah. a lot of questions, and they're billing you for it. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you realize, darn, some of this I didn't even know to come about. So I think it's a good way to get a nice one-stop shop and get yeah. some experience and get um, you know, the help you need at early stage. Because at early stage, if you get the right people around you, you can, you can do what took me the first 18 months. You could probably do that in, in probably two months. Yeah. You know? You'll be unstoppable, right? Yeah. 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 You'll feel yeah. much better about yourself. Yeah. 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 Well, cheers to that. Yeah, that would cheers. be a good thing, wouldn't it? Let's, Absolutely. To the next phase. Yes, to the next phase. To the next phase. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Well, let's get real. So let's talk about this this dystopian. You know, there's a bit mm. of a dystopian thing going on right now that yes. people are present to with, you know, again the censorship and the in in social media censorship yeah. and cancel culture. Polar polarity. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna. Say, I was gonna say, which dystopia are you talking about? There's so, there's so many layer. There's so many concurrent dystopias crazy? going on right now. It's yeah. happening at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. like, what what do you make of it? Um, I think it's what happens when well-intentioned people are not patient. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Is we got to do something. We got to do something right now. Let's shut this down. You can't right, say that. Right. You can't say this. We're not going to appreciate context. Well, you know, what do you, you're as a millennial, because this is an interesting thing, and I wonder how you relate to, you know, there's a tendency to think that hate speech means you hate to hear it. <laughs> there's more of that with the, with the Gen Zers, the Zoomers behind us. Um, I think when it comes to free speech, they don't like it. They're super PC, like, you know, they're, they're the super PC babies, you know. You know, you, you say something, they're crying about it. You know, so you made a distinction here, but you say not millennials, not it's, me. It's not necessarily, I think millennials are, are about the most uh, degaff people out there. Degaff means don't give a fuck. They're they're the most degaff group out. There. Well, them and the baby boomers are neck and neck with who doesn't care about certain things the most. But um, like you know, it's just like you know, like I think that you should be able to say whatever you want. However, there are some consequences of it. Like you know, it, sure. it, there's a reason why you can't. You know, well, you can, but you, there's a reason why it's like against the law to yell fire in a movie yeah, theater. No, no, You'll no cause doubt. a panic. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't like a certain group of people and you want people to know that, uh, say it because you'll, you'll understand the reality. And, it, mm -hmm. and by robbing people, this might sound a little weird. Yeah, no, I love it. On, yeah. on the more extreme side, uh, by robbing people the ability to be ignorant, you're robbing their ability to learn. Absolutely, right. And that's yeah. the thing is people don't understand. I don't think people, people don't understand what happens between when you're one and when you're five. A lot of things are going on and you're making all these tiny mistakes. But imagine if a kid, if a one-year-old had the capability to really understand what it was like to be criticized or sure. a two-year-old. Oh, look at you. You're not walking yet. Look, you keep falling. Those are mistakes. That's part of learning. And, you know, I'm from the South. I'm from, you know, I'm from what I call the home of the sit-in movement. Sure. Um, at, you know, uh, in, in Greensboro, the Woolsworth, Woolsworth uh, yeah. building. Yeah, people, yeah, that's People right. were getting pied. They weren't served. I'm familiar with that. My high school had a race riot. I'm familiar with it. In middle school, there were some people 
that showed up, you know, in the back of a pickup truck, and they were shooting the black kids with paintball guns. Wow. You know, that that's my experience. And what people have to understand is that experience of being exposed to that, first of all, it teaches you it's good and bad, but it also it makes it real. You can't censor people from the bad because you say, Oh, this isn't who we are. You're only we are only as great as the least of us. That's right. And so when it comes to free speech, you don't you're not allowing people to learn. If you shut yeah. them up, you're actually pushing them deeper into uh, into their, their corner. You know what I mean? Whatever like, darkness that might whatever be. Whatever that is, yeah, you know, or, like you or know, not, whatever it, unique, it, it, exactly. uninformed perspective that is, right? And, and, and we're we're just getting to the point of you know what happens when when free free speech is running rampant in the age of platforms and misinformation. So, but, you know, social media companies, I mean, can they really be the arbiters of truth? Or should they even be the arbiters of values of what we should be hearing and not hearing in society? Of, of values, no. Uh, definitely not. Because values are something that are personal. But, well, well, but let me give you an example. Determining what is information and what is misinformation is itself attempting to be an arbiter of truth. Um, to a certain degree, yes. Um, there, there has to be a limitation on it, but I don't know if the platforms are willing to do that because it's against their business model. I mean, that's my capitalist hat on, uh, is it's, it's not good for the bottom line to allocate resources to make people want to use your platform less. Uh, but at the same token, there, what I'm saying is there's a, there's a difference between, um, there's a difference between censorship and sort of reducing the sort of virality of it. So, so for example, if let's just say there was a vaccine available right now, which there is not one available right now, and that spread online, that would be an issue. Uh, if there was this thing of, you know, for example, like the common one, like new, news organizations can't say that the, the, the country's under attack. If Why it's would not. that be a problem? Doesn't that rob people of the ability to learn? It, it, no, no. Of, of the opportunity to learn. No, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. Okay, it's a it's a it's a tight well, it's a tight rope walk. So what I, what I mean by that is in the sense of, if they found out about it, okay, you should let them. I'm, what I'm saying is you shouldn't ban, you shouldn't remove that content. It should stay there. Uh, but what I'm saying is is that if it's something that has been widely debunked, and then someone puts ten thousand dollars to spread it. Uh, that's sort of where you, there are certain limitations that could be there, which is to say, like, this is totally false. This is scaring people. This is, you know, getting people up in arms. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tightrope. Yeah, walk. sure. There's always an information war. Like yeah. there's battle of information, right? And that's always present. But people have been able to make judgments between what they want yeah. to consume and what they believe, yeah. without getting sort of tagged. And the point is. Uh, you know who can who has a right to debunk something else right and at some point the debunking the people who are doing the debunking are themselves propaganda artists and people trying some of them to, yeah. some of them are and, and I think that like wh whoever it is it can't be like the news media can't be trusted because they have their own profit motive yeah and let's and let's just be clear uh, the news media and social media are competitors you know, no doubt, they're no competitors, doubt. and they also. And the, it's, the social media is now censoring news media, which is outrageous. Exactly, so it's, it's, it's this, it's this yeah. weird, it's this weird thing where one is is literally trying to trump the other. No, yeah. no pun intended, but like, it's one of it's, <laughs> it's one of it's one of these it's one of those things where they are competitors that also operate a little like a cartel because they do work together in certain. They can make sure certain things don't get out. But the deal is that I'm not saying you shouldn't trust the news media, but you should be able to be a critical thinker. And I think that with some of the things that have happened, like the the Pizzagate fiasco uh, that happened, uh, where you know Hillary Clinton is and, and, and the Democrats are running uh, uh, some child sex thing out of a random pizza shop, it's like at a certain point. Is it was it really that viral before CNN reported it? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Well, right, this thing's yeah. ridiculous. Why would anyone believe it? It's spreading everywhere, and you've just you've just given it more validity. So I think that the main, some of the main people who were criticizing it are part of the problem. I think that Twitter is sort of doing the best, even though they did make a mistake a couple weeks ago. Um, 
by pulling down some content that I forget. I, I, I can't. Are they censoring content. a whole ton? I mean, they did. They they they, they censored the media. They they uh, they they are, and I think but, what it I think what it is is they're we're now in a it's the wild wild. Everyone said Silicon Valley is the wild wild west, and what's going on is there's a lot of the the, the that media war is happening right now, um, and what it is is that both sides are manipulating their bases. They're they're triggering each other, you know that sort of thing. If you like, I I had to stop watching CNN this year. Yeah, I was just no, like, no, no, yeah. I, I I had to, and I mean, I grew up watching CNN. You know, I yeah. I, I loved it. Uh, I can't. It's gotten to the point where I can't even watch CNBC most of the time. Yeah, no, it's it's I pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I I I can't watch. I haven't been able to watch Fox News for a while. I watch Fox News for the pure yeah. purpose of understanding yeah. where the other side is. Yeah. Getting their information yeah. from. So yeah. I tell people. If you, you watch, gotta be able. You should be able to. You should be able to get all sides of it. Exactly, and, and you should and, be able to. You should be able to discern it. But the deal is, American news media, American social media, is not about the truth. It's about right. eyeballs on a screen. It's not like well, the Brits no do doubt. it. There's which, not. A, there's not a standard on it. Which also means that they really have no credibility to be the arbiters of truth. Either. Ex ex exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it has to be. It has to be not a social media company. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. It has to be not a. It has to be not a news media company. It has to be not a print media company. You know, the old saying: if it bleeds, it leads. You know, yeah. I, I tell people it was like. You know, people. Every time there's a shooting, it makes the news. But I'm like, right. we live in a country of over 350 million people that has, you know, the, the Second Amendment. Yeah. Is this really the most pressing thing? Right. So that's kind of what I'm getting at is that there's manipulation there, but there are certain basically what I'm saying is you should you should have the right to say whatever you want. I don't think that you are necessarily should also get the upshot of it being able to be distributed everywhere. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of misinformation that goes out there. But then the question is, it's one of those hard topics because now I'm acting as the arbiter of what's misinformation. What well, isn't. That, that's exactly it's a you know? sticky wicket, right? That, yeah, is, a, is you know who's who's really going to be the arbiter of what that mm -hmm. is, and aren't we big boys and girls? And didn't we didn't we already forget PizzaGate? And I don't I don't think <laughs> I don't like, think I don't think the I don't think that uh, Americans are the big boys and girls. I think that the country has a lot of growing up to do. The country has a lot of reckoning to do, and that was put on full display this summer. Yeah, yeah. where you know it was just. Uh, it was hard to watch. I mean, yeah. um, do, do I think that all cops are bastards? No. Have I had very questionable runs in, run ins with the police? Absolutely, I have. I've been accused of stealing my own car twice in my life. Wow, that's special. Yeah, I've been accused of stealing my own car twice. Um, so that's a very interesting. Can you do reason. that? I don't know if you can steal your own car. It's very hard. Yeah, I, I didn't know. Because, if you I mean, what do you explode. call it in on yourself? You sue yourself. I don't know how that works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there, there's some things there. Are all cops bad? No. I think the problem that's going on, you know, we're in the get real yeah, section. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The problem that's going on in America right now is mostly around the fact that there's no national policing standard. So you're going to keep hearing about this because it's all local, state, yeah, level it's, stuff. Yeah, yeah, right? it's, it's it's super decentralized, and it needs to be like if like you know there was what happened with George Floyd, yeah. and there are there you know there's what happened with with Sandra Bland, right. and there's all there's all these stories of this person was innocent or and got killed or this person just merely overreacted and sure. they lost their life. And again, that's again that's part of this weird culture of we're in a freedom society, so you should expect that that Karens are all over the place, yeah, so to yeah. speak. Karens come in every color, that that sort of thing. You should expect that someone who has had a bad history with the police would be on edge around them. And it doesn't mean that because they're on edge, you as a police officer should be. So what I'm saying is that if we look at this as as what it actually is, a game of whack-a-mole. The problem's here, the problem's yeah, here, the problem's here. Is. That's what's going yeah. on right now. There's no national policing standard. So it, it brings in sort of, from a law perspective, I think of federalism, which really has meant giving a lot of power to the states, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. and staying out of it where you, where you should, and only deciding that we should nationalize standards of certain conduct. Right. And even criminal law is, lo is, is state and local. Right. It's not federal for the most part, except exactly. white collar. Right. Um, so it, it raises the question whether it should be, 
And there's a lot of misunderstanding in the public when something happens in like Minneapolis or wherever yeah, it is. Because there's the whole thing. But the rioting here was it was over something but else. But the standards here are completely different. Completely, completely different. Right. But then you know, with, with what happened here, because I was I was in Rochester, and actually Rochester was on fire the same week LA was on fire. I think it was it was really bizarre. But I was working on this ventilator project up there, and I was just in disbelief that I was like, oh my god. I get my hair cut on Fairfax, and the pla the whole plate, the whole street's being looted. Uh, you know, we all right. go to Third Street Promenade from yeah. time to time. That place was, it was unbelievable. ransacked. The unbelievable. It was, was yeah. ransacked, and part of that was, I think, well, that's what happens when people have been told. You know, you get cabin fever, and you see a guy. Yeah, you've been locked up for. You, you for see, a, you see a guy on TV get uh, get get suffocated uh, with under a taxpayer, you know, funded thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, we don't pay, I mean, we live in LA, we don't pay those taxes, but there's some federal money that goes into every police sure. department. And it's an outrage. Yeah. And that's what I think it was. It was just cabin fever with, I just saw the most horrific, most horrible thing. I saw someone get paid to oh, choke sure. this dude out. Yeah. You know, judge, jury, and commissioner. You know, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or like, or like, on was it hot? That that, well, that sure, movie, Hot Fuzz, was like ju judge, sure. judge, Judy, and commissioner, just immediately aggressive, and then you know. Well, it does, yeah. it does change like the burden of proof, and you know, this sort of sort of guilty yeah. till proven innocent. The, yeah, uh, that's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really problem. interesting, and the, it's and a problem. body cam itself has created a problem because it, it, there's a perception of transparency when actually it is. Actually, the lack of transparency, it's a false truth because body cam is one perspective. It's, I was going to say, it's, yeah. one, it's one perspective. Um, yeah. It doesn't tell you what the person is looking at, but it does. It also doesn't give the different camera angles because there was, uh, it wasn't yeah. Floyd. It was another one where uh, a man was on the other side of a vehicle and you couldn't see what was just happening there. Yeah, I forgot what that yeah, was. You know, but yeah, but yeah. so much yeah. of it has happened. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah and, and right? it's, it's one of those things to where um, there's clearly a problem. Yeah, there's. Uh, really I'm problem. not, you know, I'm 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 not going to uh, necessarily defend police culture because I just can't, yeah. uh, because I I've been a victim of it. My friends have been a victim of it. But you know, there are cops in my family. Mm -hmm. There are friends of mine who are cops. I respect cops. They do the crap that people don't want to do. But at a certain point, we're asking cops to do too much, and there are certain cops that shouldn't be cops. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And the deal is, is again, I think if there was a sort of national standard, and also, you know, I've seen some things about people who are like, you need to look at these people as the enemy. I'm like, that's military talk. Yeah, we don't need great. we don't need a state funded yeah. paramilitary force. We need you to protect and serve us. That yeah. sort of thing. You know, we need you to when we call you. Show that is the slogan, after yeah. all. Yeah. For most places, <laughs> yeah, most, most places. You know, we need we need <laughs> it so that serve. we need it so that when you when you call, not we, show up and intimidate, right? <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, we need right. when you call call the police that yeah. you point the gun at the bad guy, not at the black guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those, those sorts. They of both things. start with B. Yeah, they both start with B. Exactly. <laughs> okay, they, got they, it. They both start with B, and so <laughs> it's it's one of those things. And yeah. then also, and this is going to be probably controversial. You shouldn't be a cop if you're afraid to do police work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst soldier is the one. The worst soldier is the sure. one that's the most trigger happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the worst soldier. Yeah, you have no sure. honor in those points. So there are people. There are elements in police forces all over the country that make the police look bad. And you know, I remember in elementary school they had the police come in and they told us you know not to be afraid of them and stuff like that because they have a gun, and then they had the firefighter come and tell us not to be afraid because they're wearing this scary mask, you know, right, like as a right. kindergartner. But that's part of it. The Public other, service petting zoo, yeah. yeah the the, the, the <laughs> part of it is, the, the only thing I can say about the cameras that's been good is that it shows that police are equally capable of lying, you know? Because, yeah. like, yeah. these stories don't line up sometimes mm -hmm. when, when some of these folks get caught. And we have to understand that at a certain point, um, let's look at it. I'm going to put my civic slash capitalist hat on. You're killing a taxpayer. When you're <laughs> killing taxpayers, they're going to leave. You're no, they're dead. You know, yeah, you're going. <laughs> they're going to stop funding your salaries. Yeah, exactly. Happen. It's it, it, yeah. Erodes, it erodes yeah. the it erodes the you know the, the sort of social contract of your. We pay these taxes yeah, for yeah. a reason. We don't pay these taxes for you to target people. Uh, 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 those sorts of things, you know, it's one, and this is a topic I, I rarely, you know, talk about on the record, but 
it's something to where I do think a federal standard is there, and it has to be something that's not based on military. It has to be something. You mean the federal standard should be there? Is there should be saying. a yeah, federal standard be, yeah. on on policing because that would address these issues and just yeah, not, it's a, which is very difficult to do other than yeah. whack a mole. Well, uh, yeah. given that it's very state local, it's very state yeah. local. Yeah. Like that, yeah. that's the perfect opportunity because I'm like, if right. we can give them, you know, MRAPs or whatever. So wait a second. Now, yeah. you're, like we're talking sense here, but, yeah. but like that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like why? Yeah. Why did I never hear this? Like, why are we not having this conversation in society? Why? Like, wh yeah, that, why doesn't the media say it? It's, what, instead, it's we're just hearing radical shit. Because you know why? We're allowing each other to be wrong. It's known as yeah. a civil conversation, and, <laughs> yeah, and you know, and most. Of the I'm going to love you anyway. Yeah, no exactly. What you say. Exactly. Most <laughs> of the country, most of the country cannot handle that. Yeah, yeah. Most of the country cannot handle that. It's you know. Again, PC babies out there. You said something I don't like, so I'm going to whine about it, or I'm going to cancel you. Here, I'll just... whine about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Yes, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. But I knew something was wrong when um, the first sign something was wrong was was at RIT. Uh, we had a comedian come in, well-known comedian, Lisa Lampanelli. I love Lisa Lampanelli, a uh, great female comedian. And she had, she had said some, she made a joke about deaf people, I think a few weeks prior in one of her shows. In the deaf community, uh, RIT holds, is one of two, has one okay. of two deaf colleges in the US. There's Gallaudet around DC, DC area, and there's NTID, the National Technical Institute of the Deaf. And they boycotted her because of what she was saying about deaf people, forgetting. Because the, of the joke? Yeah, forgetting it's a comedian. Yeah, it's so no there doubt. for entertainment. Yeah, they're there. They're there. The cool thing about equal comedy, opportunity hecklers. Exactly. The cool <laughs> thing about comedy is is that it's you have to, to understand comedy. You have to be able to understand both sides. To understand the person saying it does not mean it, and they're telling a story to highlight it. The That's irony right. yeah, is what yeah. you have to appreciate. Yeah. And people, I get it. People say things that are hurtful, but it's something that you have to understand. You got to put your big boy pants on. You got to put your big lady pants on. And understand that people are not going to say things you like, and if you shut it out, you are also just as bad as as the people who you are saying are ignorant or whatever. Oh, that's right. And that's right. Yeah. Reason... I mean, like my favorite jokes, the ones yeah. from my black friends talking about yeah. dumbass white guys. Exactly. I'm like, I love those jokes. Exactly. <laughs> you exactly. Can't, you can't get your panties in a water. Exactly. Because it's just yeah. like it's it, it, it fits a certain context, and yeah. you know, then I, you know, started hearing you know Bill Maher was complaining a few. And I've been watching Bill Maher for a long time. I've been watching Bill Maher since uh, high school, wow. actually, when he had politically incorrect. Um, on and he got fired for saying something politically incorrect, uh, which was <laughs> which, that, which, which was the ironic That's thing. Yeah, crazy. he said something politically incorrect on a show called Politically Incorrect, and then they you know they canceled it. I think it was a where I was. I think it was ABC, and um, you know that's how he got doing real time. Um, with it was he didn't have those restrictions, and you know he's complaining because like you know he's getting booed at things because he says he says a joke and it's like. People need to understand the beautiful thing about English is something could mean what it means, the opposite of what it means, or it's meant to be the opposite while showing what it actually is. Yeah, at the it same can have time. a double, a double entendre. Yeah. I mean, sometimes even things. triple. Yeah, yeah, you got sometimes, it. Sure, yeah, that's true. The triple, where you're making fun of the double. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. and that's what people need to understand is that learning happens by doing something wrong, and then. Realizing it's wrong and then asking questions or seeking the truth and it takes some people longer than others, but sure. when you when you When you heckle somebody when you call them an idiot a lot of people call Trump voters idiots Oh, it's terrible. And, and, What's and, the demonization and, and, and of racist. people and yeah, you know, I don't him. you know I, I don't I don't think they're idiots. I don't think they're racist I think people vote for many people for many reasons and I think particularly what happened Last one issue week. voters. Yeah, there's single issue voters. And the deal is there's multiple different single issues that people yeah, vote on. No doubt. Uh, there's someone who went to my high school who's been sort of triggering people, basically. I, I mean, like she's 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 pro life, uh, which is a very ironic term for most people who are pro life, because I say they're, they're pro life until they're born. Uh, <laughs> then then maybe not so much. I, I just want to be understood. I yeah. don't even have to be right. But I want to understand you. Exactly. You know, so it's, and right. we're, look, we're, we're not going to agree on on anything. There, there was a friend of mine. We won't. Yes, exactly. Oh, right. And yeah. of course we will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, like there, there was a 
there was a friend of mine who was, uh, we were talking about another friend of mine, she was, she was dating, and it was, I sort of made the joke, it's like, sort of like you're dating on a spreadsheet, and my friend said, you know, when you date by a spreadsheet, you end up dating yourself, because you end up finding you, and what I'm saying is that if you open up yourself to the possibility of being able to be around someone that's not 100% within your beliefs, you might actually discover this thing called love. Mm. You might be able to understand that the world works on compromise. Mm. And we're not compromising as a country. Everything is so extreme. Mm. If you go for Biden, he's gonna take our guns away. He never said that. If you go for Biden, uh, he's gonna he's gonna ban fracking. He never said that. Sure. He said the opposite of that. He said he's not gonna right. touch it because he wants to win that Pennsylvania, which, yeah. which he won. You know, if you choose to believe it, that. But you know, and apparently, button. if you yeah. voted for Trump in the last election, he was going to press all the nuclear buttons. And exactly. Were all die. And, he, and, and he hasn't yeah, because he's yeah. too busy golfing. Yeah. You well, know what you I mean? Know, you got to do too something. He's too busy golfing to do he's that. He's got to let down that tuft of hair every ex once ex in a while. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, what I'm saying is that people need to understand that you're not going to get your way all the time. And if you're in yeah. business, you're aware of this. Um, you're not going to get your way all the time, but we need to learn to talk. We need to learn, and I mean, have a conversation, not this my way or you're an idiot kind of conversations that have been going on. Because, you know, for example, I shot, I shot, I shot, I shot a gun for the yeah. first time this year. Wow. All yeah. right. Was it yours? It was not mine. It was, okay. it was a friend of mine's. Was uh, it addictive? It actually was. It was quite fun. I was scared of it at first because I was like, I'm going to screw this up. And guess what? We found out. I'm actually a good shot out the, just... That's good. I'm actually a good shot. So, so if we didn't can if we yeah. didn't cancel Thanksgiving, yeah, because of shutdowns, it's canceled now. I don't yeah. know if you heard the media. Yeah, it's canceled. The yeah. governor said so they canceled yeah. Thanksgiving, folks, yeah. to call your family. Then we would be able to have a conversation at Thanksgiving. But now we got to wait till Christmas. But that'll probably be canceled. Christmas too. probably gonna be canceled. I'm, I'm not <laughs> gonna right. lie. Uh, right. I'm not gonna lie. Easter's probably gonna be canceled too. We'll let you know by the next show. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, if, we're, if we're still before, here. Before yeah. before we get too deep into this yeah. topic. How has race shaped your journey as an entrepreneur? Uh, qu quite a bit. Um, being, being a person of color, a black person, there's, you realize, uh, like I lived in Silicon Valley shortly after um, we got funded and I moved back down to LA. And I can tell you something about Silicon Valley. There's white and there's what we down south call lily white. <laughs> Silicon Valley's lily way. I told yeah, people yeah. I only saw one other black person a day, and that was myself. And I was brushing my teeth in the That's bathroom. That's true. I don't see. I don't yeah. see any black guys up there. And there's a reason yeah. for that. When was Silicon Valley really created? It was created in the '60s. You know, it was created. Uh, you know, from the offshoots of Fairchild Semiconductor, which later became Intel with Bob Noyce and those guys. One of those guys, one of the traders, say, is a is a known racist, eugenics guy. Huh. So, but what does it really bring up the time? period of that is what was going on in America in the 60s. You mean the woke peninsula had the woke, racists yes. on it? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Wow. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, I'm sure half of our listeners had no idea. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so it's, 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 one of the, it's one of those things is, it's, I, as I tell people these days, is Silicon Valley racist? No. It appears to be that way because there are no black people. So you have to ask that question, why? You have to five why. Why are there no black people? Well, when was right, it funded? Right. Oh, sorry, when was it started? In the 60s, what was going on in the 60s? Black people didn't have the, the right to vote there. Something I did not know, because huh. being on the East Coast right. and going you know, through, through American public school, right. I didn't realize how close Oakland and San Francisco were. Yeah. Oakland's black, San Francisco's white. And what separates them? That bridge. Yeah. You know, Well, the two bridges, technically. Yeah, yeah, so totally. the deal is, is that what was going on there is black people were excluded. You have to consider what was going on in the 60s. Redlining was going on to like what the 70s, sure, I think. Sure, sure, that's crazy. So black people weren't even allowed to really live there. Right. That's, that's it, I mean, think about sure. it, that's part of American culture. So the yeah. reason why I bring that up is there are people who were two and three generations of Silicon Valley wealth, two and three generations of, of startups and whatnot, yeah. and those people were not black. But what you need to know about Silicon Valley and what you'll find out about fundraising in general is it's all relationship based. So because black people were excluded literally 60 years ago is why that place is lily white. That's why less than 1% or maybe we're at 1% yeah. finally uh, of startups are, are people of color. Yet we're 13% of the, of, of the population and we're, right. more, and we're a larger portion of that in the economy, believe it or not, when it comes to consumer <laughs> spending. So 
that's something to consider. Where's your funding from? Is it from Silicon Valley? Or is it Most outside? of it is not. I wouldn't figure. The, yeah. the, I'll put it this way. The funding that, that has given me the biggest headache is from Silicon Valley. Most of our funding is from uh, Asia. Okay. So it's from uh, Korea and it's from somewhere in, in Southeast Asia. Yeah. I'll put yeah. it that way. But, um, but the, those two places where we got it from, because they were very folk. Asian investing culture is a bit different than American investing culture. And there's three investing cultures that I'm, 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 not, I'm not aware of African or Australian or South American investing culture. But the, the big three investing cultures are American investing culture, European, and Asian. Asian investing culture is more so based on facts. We're going to make a cartoon on this, by the way, yeah. afterwards. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Asian investing culture is more so based on facts. They want to know science. They want to know it works or it could work. And there's a certain thing there. And they also yeah, want to know. The Chinese want to copy it. But yeah, yeah, exactly. And they also want to know, particularly Chinese, they also yeah. want to know, can you have a good time mm -hmm. with them, you know, after work? Um, the American investing culture is more so about bravado. It's more so about, I want to hear this big story. And that's why we have big successes. And that's how we have crap like Theranos, which, you know, was literally mathematically unfounded. You know what I'm saying? That's how yeah. we have these big failures, is your ability to tell a story. And then there's European investing culture, which is the worst, the worst. They think a startup is a, they think a, startup is a company that has 10 years of revenue. <laughs> you know, they want everything, everything, everything done. You know, everything. They say Americans want everything done. No, the Europeans want everything done. They want to see all these years of, of this and that. They probably want a business plan, which is the biggest waste of time is to write a business plan and give that to an investor. They're not going to read it. But anyway, sorry, I kind of got, I kind of got off track. No, it was, but, it was fascinating to hear yeah. you characterize the different cultures, the uh, investment yeah. cultures. So what I'm yeah, saying yeah. is that black people, people of color, have been excluded from that. Um, women, though, I will say this. From my evidence, I will say that Silicon Valley is not fair to women whatsoever. Uh, from things that I've seen at, Do you think it's more explicitly discriminatory against women versus more, less less so racist against blacks? Discriminatory, oh, well, definitely that. Definitely yeah. that. Yeah. I, I would say discriminatory is a compliment. Uh, to, to, discriminatory towards women yeah. would be a compliment because it's not even on that level of thought. I still think primarily based on, comp, you know, things I've seen at certain company events in Silicon Valley, women are still mostly objectified and it's sad. Mm. Um, it really is. And, um, and it's not to say that, uh, you know, uh, women shouldn't be objectified because some want it, some don't. But I don't, from what I've seen in the culture, the way women are viewed in Silicon Valley is just not fair because it's like they're not there at all. Like when they're in the room, they're not there at all. They're talking, people are talking over them. Um, there, you know, there's the constant thing of like, you know, of they're in there because of how they look in certain cases. And a lot of these women are, you know, papered up. They have, they have degrees out the wazoo. They have great ideas. I can tell you as a, as a black person, um, the weird stories we have with investors, uh, that black people have as with investors and the strange things that happen yeah. in meetings sometimes, the only other group that has that are women. No kidding. So yeah, and the deal is, if you're a person of color, you need to seek out women as as allies, white women as allies. If you're a white woman, you need to seek out people of color as allies because we have the we go through some of the same stuff of being ignored, but it's on a completely different reason. Yeah. There's I just I don't like I said I think discrimination is a compliment to it because I just don't think women are recognized that much. Wow, that's a, that's saying? serious it's, statement. It's, it's a it's a weird well, way to put it, but I don't I don't think that. They are that they are recognized for their contributions. They aren't recognized for their capability, and they need to be supported. And it's yeah. just it's just sad because like I can't do anything. Yeah, you know they the advantage that they have really if, if you're a woman is if you're a white woman is that uh, you do you're at least part of the network. They have access. You have access. access that, but, that, but what that good I is the have. access if they just see right through you, right? Well, that's the if, thing. Or they just see boobs. Well, exactly. Know? I was going to say if or they, they just or, see, if or if they can only see here. Right, exactly. You're invisible except for this. You know, that's sad. Um and, yeah. and 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 that's the thing. And um, they have to work very hard. But yeah. um, and, and it's it's a it's a bad part. I'm and I'm generalizing, of course. No, it's, I'm not it's, saying that there, it's, look, this it's is, like that. There isn't but about there right or things. wrong, but yeah. it's a fascinating perspective yeah. to hear, you know, through uh, through your eyes, yeah. 
your perceptions of a woman's struggle in Silicon Valley. And, you know, perhaps there's, you know, from anybody who's from Lily White, aren't we newly named um, Silicon Valley Lily White? Yes, yeah. Um, hopefully those who are listening can take, take some cues from this because there's a lot to learn uh, and becoming self-aware and learning about how to get out of the bubble. It's been long said yeah, to be a bubble. Yeah, because, like, I, I've seen it. Like, uh, in, in, in competitions, even, I've mm -hmm. seen, like, just brilliant women get passed over by, like, someone who you can't, not say you have to tuck your shirt in, you can't tuck your shirt in, you can barely describe what your concept is, and it's great, and I'm just like, that thing's illegal, and you think it's the best thing ever. And I was like, what about her? I'm not going to yeah. say, what about me, because that's super biased. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, let's have an open mind. You know, I, I, like yeah, to, yeah. I like to put other people on. I don't like to just put myself on. And like that's something that I've seen happen before, and it's yeah. just a coincidence that um, I have a weird thing about calling women minorities because they're like more than half the population. But right. we'll just say yeah. underrepresented yeah, yeah. in they those fields. They call it women and minorities. They right. don't actually call women minorities. Yeah, exactly. But that's yeah. that's that's another conversation. Like like yes, how, how a... diversity has changed. Yes, over that's the years. true. Right, when right. I was when I was in when I started college, diversity meant black men or sorry black people. Um, when I graduated, it meant white women, and then three years later, it meant gay white men. Really? Yeah, it keeps evolving. Diversity keeps well, evolving. Well, sure. And I thought, I thought that also yeah. meant Asians and like, you know. No, no. no when they I'm, talk about diversity, it doesn't include Asians most It doesn't, of the time. right? Asians get the like short end of the stick on that. Asians, Asians have a, an interesting issue in, a, in America, which is that they are invisible in a different way. Yeah. They are viewed as non-threatening and they're viewed as a bot, which is sad too. They're only viewed for their minds. They're not typically viewed for creativity. Yeah. It's like a, it's a strange stereotype. You're yeah. smart, so I'm going to hire you for this. You know, so the stereotypes work really strange. Generalizing, of course, but it's one, it's one of those things where I have noticed that, and I've said it before, Asians seem to be invisible in American culture. Yeah, no, I, I'm you're totally either black, you. You're either black, you're white, or you're Latino here. For the most check, part. Check that. Look, Corey, yeah. I got to tell you something. I wish this show was three hours long because <laughs> I want to I wanna peel the onion. I just want to keep peeling it. I'm yeah. like, wait a second. I want to talk about Asians for another yeah. hour. Oh, my God. But it, like, because we could. Yeah. You know, like, but I want to, like, get, I want to, like, get to a point where we can, like, bring it to a close on the topics because this is so juicy. Mm -hmm. And, like, we can go on forever. I can, you know, we're almost done with this bottle of wine. We need to crack open another. We do need to crack open We'll do it after the, Absolute, after the show. Absolutely. So, so really, you know, this, this thing is super cool. Are, are you going to launch a commercialized version of this soon? We, we are. Like I said, for us, um, we were wanting to do something this year. This was supposed to be our biggest revenue year ever. Yeah. Um, and for a startup, does it, what does that mean? But we were we were we could have hit we could have hit the seven figures this year in revenues for the first time, and a lot of that would have been profit. Um, that's going to have to be pushed off until next year. So for that's us, right we around just the corner. Yeah, we just have to close on another round of funding. And twenty we'll twenty right is the year to forget. <laughs> you have no choice. You have no choice to forget. Like uh, like when this stuff got started in February or March, that feels like it was two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Were you going to let us help you get there? Yeah, absolutely. Because I would love to do that. I, yeah. I dig what you're doing. Well, and, thank you. And your perspective on things is just really refreshing. To, you really appreciate you getting real about it and, and giving your unique perspective. I think we're all just, we, you know, diversity to me is diversity of the human and the thought. And, yeah. Because none, and, and, yeah. And, and that's the thing. And, and yeah. what, what, what people, the powers to be or people who are in charge of hiring have to understand that Saying diversity, I know you said I know you didn't mean it that way because yeah. you said you, you put other things around it. Yeah, but some people think diversity is only diversity of thought. Absolutely. And like I, I only yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I advise, and I'm not going to say the name of the person because there are some privileged conversations I have with. Um, I, I'm allowed to be in certain rooms yeah, at certain very very big uh, companies uh, and listen to conversations about diversity, and then get the re you know we can get real yeah. with some people afterward. And the deal is that diversity of thought, if you leave it at that only, it's oh, a cop-out. Oh, that's not diversity. Yeah. No, 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 it's, not it's at a, all. It's it, a cop-out. It has what to I, be everything. Yeah, because yeah, that's a, what I tell people is I say, when you say diversity, what do you mean? Because I tell people, my joke is, I, I, my joke is I tell behind, you know, behind the scenes to people is, oh, oh yeah, this company is diverse. They have all kinds of white people in here. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they don't, they don't, you know, you know what I mean? That's not, that's not diversity. Oh, no, no. You know? Well, look, I used to say, you know, it's funny you were saying we started the show. I'm going to end it this way mm -hmm. with, with, you know, you put in your shoes and say, what, what kind of man would a woman like? This man, this man, or right. that man? Yeah. You know, and I've always been a Renaissance man. You know, I, so I always thought about it as, 
you have to be an interesting human. You don't have to be, but like you should strive to be an interesting, yeah. well-rounded, you know, have different skills, different talents, different left brain, right brain, yeah. and you know, know how to cook, know how to dance, know how to whatever. I mean, like, you know, think, think logically and critically. I mean, all kinds of different things. But even within yourself, diversity it can exist. It, it, it is, and, and again, it goes back to yeah. having an open mind, allowing people to be wrong, allowing people to just talk. Yeah. Because right now, what's been going on for the last, I mean, it's not four years, it's not even really true, what's been going on the last maybe eight years, yeah. is the, the country's ripping itself apart by thinking that the other side's wrong. Yeah, that's and it. And the deal is, is like, it's the, the country is 49, 49 basically, yeah. you know, and there's that 1% that says, you know what, I'm jumping ship or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. And mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a power struggle, there's a culture war that's going on. It's fueled yeah. by misinformation on both sides. It's fueled by, you know, we're talking about before, it's fueled by both sides gaslighting each other. And not to sound like, what was that crazy, well, I won't call her crazy. The, the, the lady who was running for, she's not crazy, I, I apologize <laughs> for saying that. People call her that crazy lady that was running for the, the, the Democratic Party. She was advocating love. Oh gosh, yes, that one. I forgot. Marianne Williamson? That sounds right, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. didn't last long. Yeah, she didn't last yeah. long, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's one of those things where we have to understand that it's it's one country. Yeah. It's one yeah. country and, um, you know, like that old that old uh, sort of advertisement, you know, join or die with a snake that's yeah, cut yeah, up into yeah. pieces. And right now, the, this, 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 the country's cut up into about 50 pieces. Well, yeah, it's, it's one thing to observe it and, and we know where we're at, but we also know where it needs to get and probably a little more love is where it needs yeah, to it, go. Yeah, it needs to go there. So. I mean, we, we can stay away from, I think if we, as a country, yeah. we stay away from the wedge issues, we stay away from social issues, we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that if we can realize that, hey, maybe, maybe just we should do this crazy idea of not having these wars in other countries. Yeah. Stop, yeah. stop blowing up their schools and building them back because sure. the schools yeah. here are destroyed already, you know? Yeah. What about, our, where, when have you seen the federal government build new hospitals here? We build hospitals all over the world. We can't I build know, them here. I know, it's embarrassing. We build schools then, all over the world. We can't build them here. Again, you yeah. know, we're like second bottle of wine topics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, that's deep shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep I going. Love it. I'm going to keep going. It. My bad. My you bad. are a deep yeah. guy, and yeah. I, I love that about you. Yeah, my and bad. It, I been, apologize. No, no, you didn't do it. You, didn't, you were doing everything right. <laughs> yeah. You're exactly the kind of person that, that I'd love to get real with, and that, like, I think we all need to have dialogues like this. And I hope, I hope anybody who's watching it can get inspired to have dialogues like this with for friends, their family, and people of completely opposite points yeah. of view. And that's gonna make us better. Yeah. Love love your love your wild uncle at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whenever we're allowed yeah, to. Yeah, whatever's not other. canceled. Yeah. Just just yeah. love them. Exactly. <laughs> do, do, do. Tell 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 your tell teach your uncle how to use Zoom. Yeah, that's right. And just just shut up and listen. <laughs> you might learn something. Perfect. Yeah. Corey Mack, <laughs> yeah. LaForge Optical, yes. thanks for joining us. This is CEOs Get Real. I'm Christopher Marston with Exemplar. Really enjoyed having you on the show. Yes. Thank you. I, I enjoyed being here. Awesome. Have a good one, everyone. That was killer. Yeah, right. man. Yeah. That was fun. I could like, talk I, to you all day.